Hello and welcome back to Burnley. And today, well, it's coming down to the wire. And we got some fixtures coming up. Four fixtures left to play in this season. We have Rotherham, QPR, Bristol City and Cardiff. And boy, oh boy, is this getting tense. Because if we have a look at what's happening in the league... We are four points behind Norwich, not five, as the thumbnail says. Cardiff are two points behind us, and I think the rest, Middlesbrough, five points behind, QPR out of it. So it really is about second place. And can we maintain and hold on to second place? And if there is anybody here, can you say hi and let me know if the stream is okay? I'm surprised not to see Ethan here <laughs> and Blob, um, but hopefully they will turn up very shortly. And we're going to um, have a look at this Rotherham team. It's coming down to the wire now. We have to be careful. We have to take every team very seriously. And if we have a look at how they play first... Wing play, so we want to be forcing them inside. I'm guessing that they're, that they're wingers or possibly even looking at the way they line up. They're going to sit back and their wing backs, Norton Cuffey, who I know is a decent player, and Bramall will be the ones providing this wing play for them, which means that they'll be having three players in here, but they will be leaving space behind them. So my tactic... Is it right to play the high press or should I be going more for the for the low block and trying to drag them out? Because of where they are, I think we should go at them. I think we should play positively. I think we should play as we play and we should definitely stop crosses. I think we should press them. I think we are a better team than them and I think we should just continue to play how we play and just try to spread the ball about and try to win this football match and that's the way that we will attempt to play this today and we shall see how this goes but let's have a look at uh, let's go to the let's go see how they play first we'll go into their schedule We'll have a look. Their form is absolutely diabolical. They got a 2-2 draw against Luton. And playing with this kind of a 4-2-3-1 in this game. They probably played a little bit more attacking in that game. And which one is it? So they are the red team. Most of their play coming down the right. We can see that. And a lot of, not many shots. And these high xg and these are low xg and we need to maybe just stop them getting the ball into the box so the high line seems probably the way to go at least in the beginning if we have a look at their pass combinations and we look for rather um the the really down the right is where they do most of their combinations there's a lot of interchanging going on down this left hand side and it looks to me like Connor Washington is a bit of a pivot, tends to distribute the ball a lot to all these different different outlets that he has. And so I think, yeah, we have to just make sure we take out, especially this right-hand side. Norton Cuffey is very, very far, high up, and it's possible that there will be space behind Norton Cuffey. And with that in mind, it might be a good idea to actually focus our play down the left and to see if we can't take advantage early on of Norton Cuffey being out of position, which he may well be. And so uh, I, I can't see any other thing that we need to do. If we look at the overview, Bramall is in good form. He's, his tackling is very good. Um, goalkeeper's in very, very good form. Although his possession stats are not very good, he doesn't actually um, have a great deal of pass completion, suggests that he's going to play it long. So closing him down is probably not the best idea. 
um because he's just going to play it long if we've got three players pressing him up here then we've taken three players out of the game so it might not be a good idea to press the goalkeeper uh, to prevent the goalkeeper short distribution um they are under pressure a lot and they're performing well below average in terms of their hello blob how are you doing in terms of their attacking numbers, well below average. I can see straight away most of their defensive actions are in their own penalty area. So they are under a lot of pressure. And they pa pass as attempted from near to the halfway line. And most of them from near to the halfway line or just past the halfway line. So they're not going to play, I don't think, um, in a low block. I think that they will probably look to play as high up high up the pitch they gain a lot of possession from inside their own half not much um and they lose a lot of possession as well um in this area in the center of the pitch i i really can't see that there's anything that we should be particularly worried about in terms of this this rotherham team if we look at the report go to the scout report um, Chiesa is playing well at right back, but he, he doesn't seem to be on the team sheet. They do, well, four out of 11 have come from crosses. That's not really that much. Tackling is good, so we don't want to run at them. I'm going to instruct the team to dribble less. And they're very strong, very brave. They do lack aggression, so we can press them. Um... And, and really, they they don't look like they're a very good team, and it will just be one of those. We will have to play badly. In order to lose this game, we will have to play badly. And the way this Burnley team shapes up, then we've every chance of... Uh, yeah, no problem, Blob. It wasn't one of my finest days on Tuesday. I can tell you that for nothing. And Tuesday was a bit of an absolute disaster. Um, but luckily, the teams around us also had a disaster. We lost against Middlesbrough in a game I can't explain. Um, I really don't know what happened. Sheffield United, we then beat very comfortably, and I can't explain that one either. It, it was a very strange, very, very strange day. And then we only managed to draw against Reading, which was a very poor result. And so... I don't know if the game's taking over at this point and my input is irrelevant now. Um, I, I think, yeah, we don't want to be preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. I don't want players running at the goalkeeper because he's going to kick it long anyway. And hopefully we can win the ball in this area when he does kick it long. And... They do lose the ball in this area of the field quite a lot. So I want uh, Westwood to be tackling harder. He can tackle. And Bastian, he also can tackle. So I want him to be tackling harder as well. I want them under pressure. And we'll also tell Bastian to close down more. Um, just put pressure on them. And I think... If we do the job, if we play well, we'll win this game. If we don't play well, we won't win it. <laughs> that is the bottom line in in this game. So we'll go and see what the uh, <laughs> the the assistant manager has to say. I mean, I don't even know at this point in time who is the best team, who makes up the best team in this Burnley team. And tackle harder we know they're not aggressive but they are physically strong so i don't think that's a good idea um so he's had his say i'm not going along with any of that well it should be an easy three points it should be like one of the easiest three points that we can get they're in 19th place their form is dreadful but they are battling against relegation and Norton Cuffey, we should be closing him down. We should be hard tackling him and we should turn him on to his left foot. We don't want him marauding up the wing. We want we want to keep these boys really quiet, these two here. And we should be okay if we can do that. 
this guy has got good pace i don't want to be rushing at him but i if we are around i want him to be hard tackled and i want him on his right foot and i think because he's not very good at dribbling his composure concentration is not very good we'll tight mark him and take him out of the game that way that takes takes the width out of the game and if we do a good job on these two then we won't have anything to worry about attacking center mid he isn't that great a player we want to hard tackle him too he can dribble um so I don't want to be closing him down but we'll just type mark him type mark him and we'll hard tackle him and then the two strikers which one is he kelly is more the advanced forward he's less likely to roam around so left foot for sure and we'll just tight mark him he's not going to roam around very much and connor washington is more likely to roam around he's probably it's interesting to try and work out what he's going to play as probably as a a deep lying forward or a well no he's a bit small for a deep lying forward i would say he's going to play as a pressing forward he's quite aggressive um so he's more likely to be playing as a pressing forward he then will drift around this area so i don't want people being pulled out of position so we'll just turn him on to his left foot and we'll keep an eye on him just in case he is pulling people out of out of position and that's it really i don't want to close their goalkeeper down i don't want to be dribbling so we dribble less norton cuffy plays very high up this side of the pitch so there might be space in behind him so we'll focus our play down the left and we'll continue to counter and we will press but we won't prevent the goalkeeper short distribution so time to time to go to this match and we still have bayek out of course oh let's take the sound away what i might do is go to key let's go to key highlights to see if we can't speed this up a little bit for today and we'll take a chance on not being able to see what's going on on the pitch. I support Manchester United blob for my sins. And once again, they've, they kind of falling away at the end of the season. And uh, that's pretty normal for United. I'd be happy if they get into the Champions League, though. Which is possible. I wouldn't say it's probable. I'd say it's possible and uh, it is going to be rotherham getting the game underway and i don't like it when there's a highlight at the beginning of the game it's never a good sign but the good thing is is that it does usually get turned over <laughs> and uh nothing came of it anyway i just want to check that we are on no we are on extended let's go to key highlights let's i i have this funny feeling that the game is now taking over that my input is pretty much decided unless i do something quite remarkable in game their focus of attacks interestingly enough is down the middle and uh maybe they've kind of figured out that we are a little bit weak down the middle and maybe i should have one of my central defenders stepping up a bit they are actually we are actually dominating the game that is actually burnley not Rotherham, but it is Rotherham with the first highlight. Ball into the box, headed clear. And we need to get this ball clear. Collected by Murich. Nice one. Let's have a win today. <laughs> if the curse of FM worked the other way last time. You got tickets for the FA Cup final. That's absolutely awesome. City United. <laughs> United's only chance to stop them doing the treble. That's only ever been done once. Can City do it? And here is Zauri giving the ball away. He has a habit of doing that, Zauri. He's a terrible, terrible player at keeping the ball. And Rotherham look like they are in, look like they're going to score, and they have scored. And I really am frustrated as hell with this Burnley team. 
I really don't know what to do with them. This is just like... I really don't know what to do about this Burnley team. They are so poor. We've got no chance in the Prem if we actually do get promoted. We've got no chance in the Prem. And I was actually thinking that in this, this is going to be a really difficult summer transfer window. I'm going to go attacking. I've got nothing to lose. And in the transfer window, it's going to be like, I think I'm going to have to transfer list everyone. Apart from a couple of players, everyone needs to be transfer listed. Howard Bellis will go back. Um, Bayer will go back. I have checked out whether they're available um, for loan again. They're not. Um, so all five loanees will go back. So there's five gone. There isn't, any, there isn't really a decent player in that team who could play in the Premier League. And I think all of them will be pretty much transfer listed. I want to get. I don't want any of them. Kirk can probably can stay in the team, and we have equalised. Campbell can stay in the team. Um, Twine can stay in the team, but I don't have faith in any of the other players. And at least we've got to go back now, and that's good news. And. Going attacking might be what's needed against Rotherham. And it did come from down the left, but not because there were ton, there was tons of space. Um, maybe I should think about taking that instruction away. But let's leave it there. Kirkin is obviously having a good game. Let's go through Kirkin for the time being. And at the moment, what's happening in the other games... Cardiff in particular is what I'm interested in not playing today so we need to win this because Cardiff are not playing today and if Cardiff win their game tomorrow or on Monday then they could go above us and that would not be good news Norwich I suspect will win um I, ha I just have this feeling that the game has actually taken over now my input has been what it's been up to this point and the game's now taking over and deciding how the table's going to look and it doesn't matter about my input i suspected that last last week um on oh, there is another chance but again we can't finish we really are so poor at finishing and i really don't know how to get the best out of this team at the moment Rotherham I think are playing better than we are we've had all the possession but Rotherham are, are creating chances which they shouldn't be creating it's difficult to know where their passes are coming from now of course because we're playing in key highlights and that's a dreadful free kick absolutely dreadful and that's why I don't want to press the goalkeeper because hopefully we should win these balls and as long as we pick up the second ball then we should we should be fine against this and we are doing that because we have 64% of the possession we've had most of the chances our XG is better but we're just looking like Burnley we look like a poor team and there's almost another it's, I want them to pass the ball around quicker. Maybe I've got to go to a high tempo. I don't want them holding on to the ball. There's another chance missed. It, this game is. It will not allow me to... Let's go to a higher tempo. Just get rid of the ball. And this game just will not allow me to score goals. It's Every time we're in a really good position, we miss. And I'm looking at... Rather, I'm already they're so tired, and we should be beating we should be beating this team easily, and we're not and so let's tell them I am far from pleased, and who's not playing well actually, everybody's doing all right. Connor Roberts isn't having the greatest of games, but so far, I'm not too happy. A point is definitely not enough against Rotherham. You've got to be winning this game otherwise I mean we have QPR next 
And unless the game's going to decide, oh, right, we'll, we'll let him beat QPR, which really wouldn't make any sense. Um, and we're not really playing very well. And Rotherham have scored again. <laughs> and I just don't believe this. I, as I said, I think the game... I'm going to go to the low block. Um, I think the game has just decided to take over now. It's it's decided how everybody is going to finish. And it's just taken over. The, whatever I seem to do doesn't seem to work. And I need to go attacking. We'll go to the low block, go attacking. I'm going to put the full backs on attack now and see what happens to be perfectly fair to be perfectly frank i don't even mind if i get fired i think there's no way that this team can survive in the prem it's hopeless it's really poor and you can just looking at them they can't string passes together they can't put chances away they've got no chance in the prem we do have another chance and we have equalized again <laughs> and uh, it I don't know it just seems whatever I do whatever I do it doesn't matter at this point in time and Connor Roberts is on a 6.4 he's got to come off and we'll put Matt Loughton on Connor Roberts Twine is having an awful game I had a lot of faith in Twine when he came back from his injury I've played him a lot he's rubbish He's going to be transfer listed. Um, and this just is poor. I really don't know what to do. I think I have to make some changes. I have to be proactive in my changes now. And let's go and have a look. 6.6 .6 for Harwood Bellis. He's suddenly become a poor player, Harwood Bellis. He was absolutely brilliant probably the best in the championship at the beginning of the season he's just become a poor player now and that's the way it goes in fm scott twine dreadful zori dreadful vitinho can come on and i don't have attacking me a brown hill can play as an attacking attacking mid can't he let's try that Let's put some fresh legs on. Let's see if they can make the difference. Again, they're going long. They do go long. And that might have been my error for playing too high up the pitch. But it didn't look to me like that's how they scored their goals. We just looked very poor. And I really... It's like... I hate managing this team at the moment. And this is, this is another thing that is happening here. Why are my players shooting from 40 yards? They are all on shoot less often. And every game it's the same. It's not like it's a one-off. Every game is the same. And I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. I do have one more substitution I can make. Uh, nobody is playing that badly, actually. And nobody's particularly tired. They're exhausted. And we still can't put them away. I'm going to go very attacking now. Um, Bastion is tired. So let's get Bastion off. Put Cullen on. He's, he's an absolute nightmare, Cullen. He's an absolute nightmare. And I can't just... It's hard to watch this. It's hard to watch. Rather, I'm bottom of the league team... And another shot from 40 yards. I don't know why my team are doing this. In real life, they're very good. Um, in F FM, have just decided they're not a good team. <laughs> and like players like Teller, Twine, they're, they're great players in real life. They're absolutely shocking in this, in this game. And... The, well, without a striker, we couldn't get a striker at the beginning of the season. And here, here it is. There's the winner. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear. I, I have... It's like I have no power over it anymore. Um, 
the early part of the season, I was able to make changes. I was controlling games from the manager's seat. But now, whatever I do, it doesn't work. And we'll look at what was the, the stats. The stats are all in our favour. They haven't had the ball to begin with. <laughs> and it's really weird, this game. And when it gets in this mood, there's, there's nothing you can do to fight it. Nothing you can do. You just got to let it play out now. Whatever, and he's offside, but can't score anyway. I just don't know why we are so poor. I really don't know. And it's not the tactic. The tactic has worked. I mean, Benfica are unbeatable with this tactic. Preston were unbeatable. We went... Um, almost had an unbeaten season with Preston. We've had one unbeaten season with Benfica. It's The tactic's absolutely perfect. It works perfectly. But I don't know what is wrong with this. We just have to just like accept it. The, the game's decided. And I, I don't mind whichever way it decides because getting sacked will not be a bad thing. Hey, Thomas, how are you doing? From Indiana. Oh, that must be quite early in Indiana. Teller is another player who's absolutely rubbish. I can't have any of these players going up into the Prem, even if we do get promoted. They just wouldn't cope. We'll be zero points at the end of the season. This is just shocking. Absolutely shocking. And Cardiff will overtake us if they win their game now. And that means we have to beat QPR in the next game. And it is going to be a win for Rotherham. And nothing I could do about it. I just, I do, I feel like all the input that I put into this game at the beginning um, was making a difference. Now it's not, I'm going to throw the water bottle at them. I don't care if they're upset. Um, Cardiff now will go on and win their game and jump over us. But as I said, I don't care if I get sacked because I am not enjoying this save at all. I really don't mind if I get sacked. And um, Burnley can find someone else to manage this bunch of idiots. And they, because they are just the worst squad that I've ever managed in FM. None of them can play football they are the worst team i've ever come across really are and you saw it there again examples of it shooting from 40 yards and you'd think by now in this season they would be used to not shooting from 40 yards um they've been trained week after week after week everyone's on shoot less often they're on work it into the box and they've been trained on that and they're still shooting from 40 yards totally ill-disciplined bunch of players um i i kind of don't want to go through this anymore because whatever i'm doing it doesn't seem to make any difference at the moment i think the game has taken over and the game is going to do what the game is going to do and it wouldn't surprise me if we actually go and beat queen's park rangers now um, well, I'm not quite sure. I think we'll wait until the Cardiff result comes in. Oh, Cardiff lost. Look at that. <laughs> and Norwich won. So Norwich pretty much have won the championship. Cardiff lost. So we are still two points above, but Middlesbrough won. Um, and the game, you can see, if we look at the table, you can see what's happening what the game is doing now all the good stuff that i did at the beginning of the season grinding out results making changes getting wins out of nothing it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore the game has taken over and my input doesn't mean anything and i really don't care about this i'm going to play qpr in the way that we play we'll start with the low block this time <sighs> to Visoklu, ability demands a place in the team. Well, he's not going to take the place of K. 
Campbell, that's for sure. But let's give him a try then. If you think that he demands a place in the team, then let's give him a try. And we'll put him on Twine. I mean, their form is dreadful. I, I, I just really don't know what to do about them. Um, these two central defenders were the best in the league. And now they're the worst. Absolutely the worst. And it just seems to me like the game has taken over. That's it. There's nothing I can do. So let's get through it. Let's get to the end of the season. See if I get sacked or not. Let's have a look. The board are saying gain automatic. Because we're in second, they're saying they're pleased. But if we slip to third, that goes to very disappointed. And that's happened before. And they will not accept anything other than an automatic promotion. Okay, I want to try. I actually want to try Vatinho out on the left wing. Um, Dervis Oglu, can he play as an attacking mid in the centre? Twine, I've had enough of him. Um, let's let's do it that way. Let's try. Let's start with Brown Hill on the wing. I've had enough of of Teller. Teller in real life is a very good player. If we look at him. In terms of what he's done. His average rating is 6.9. He did have a good game against Rotherham. And his form isn't bad. So maybe I need to bring Teller back. Because his form isn't bad. And just put. Let's put Brownhill in with Westwood. Losing Bayek was a big blow. I. Uh, <sighs> I, I actually really don't mind which way this goes. I really don't mind. If we get sacked, we get sacked. Because the thing is, when this, when you're in this situation, if you're not enjoying managing the team, then it's, very, it's pointless actually doing it. So we'll start with balanced. We'll go with the low block, see if that works. The, the green lines blob mean that the um, they have a relationship. They work well together. Um, so a dotted line would be that they're getting to know each other, getting to work well. They have a partnership developing. I really don't take any notice of it. I don't think it means that much. Um, and... Uh, I, and the yellow ones mean that they don't work very well with each other. So, I, I don't know. I don't take them to heart. I'm aware of them. But I don't think that it matters. Ashley Barnes, like, yeah, I got fighting with him ever since the season began. And I can't get rid of him. He's like a bad smell hanging around the dressing room. I should put him in the reserves. Expectation against QPR is a win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the board are going to have a shock when we lose this game and drop to third. And maybe I should be thinking about... Maybe I should be thinking about my full-backs who are not playing very well. Uh, Roberts had a nightmare again. Loughton. And let's... Bring McNally in for Howard Bellis, who's not playing very well at the moment. Kirkin, have to play him. He seems like my best option. I'm going to go with that. And he wants me to go to Cautious again. And he wants to drop, <coughs> drop the line deep. That's a, looking for a disaster. We'll go, we'll play balanced. They're, they're a good team, QPR. And I'll just turn him onto his left foot and hard tackle him. Good team. And uh, there's no way, in reality, the way we are playing, we should get any sort of result. But I bet you we win this. Um, we'll close him down and right foot hard tackle him. This is, this is like puzzling me if we do win this then something is pretty much messed up with this game and hard tackle yeah close him down and left foot that right winger 
right foot, wasn't it? No, left foot. We want him on his left foot. We want him coming inside. Don't want to get too close to him, though. Stefan Johansson. Most creative player they have. So tight mark him, right foot. If you, they have the opposition of a very creative player, tight mark him. Don't close him down. Because the difference is that you want to take the space away from him before he gets it. You don't want him in space ever. Um, and so, yeah, we want to turn him on to his right foot. So tight mark the creative players. The ball carriers close them down. And this one looks like a ball carrier. He's got decent dribbling. He's not pacey, though. So let's close him down. And then on the left wing, no pace. So we should be able to close him down. Hard tackle him and put him onto his left foot. That's what we want to do with him. Put him onto his left foot. And then the two strikers. That's a tough one. He's very strong. He's very tall. I just want to turn him onto his left foot. I don't want to tight mark him. Uh, he's too tall. And if we try to tight mark him, then he might get flick ons and stuff. Um, so we'll just ease off him. And then this other geezer, we can tight mark him and put him onto his left foot. Tight mark him left foot. And. Let's just go and see what happens here. We're going to start with the low block. Nathan Teller's apprehensive, but he can get on with it. Um, be finishing the season on Tuesday. I think, for me, this season finishes here today. <laughs> we are favourites for a reason. Should I just tell them I trust them to make the difference? I don't trust them. I lie to this team all the time. Should be saying I have I do not trust you in the slightest. You can see that QPR are tired already, but we will probably not be able to take advantage of that. And we'll just play the system as we play it. McNally's picked up a yellow card already. QPR look like the better team at the moment, which doesn't surprise me. Although we've had all the match momentum, there's not been a single chance. QPR are attacking mostly down the right-hand side. <coughs> and they do have the first highlight, which is always a bit of a worry. They just look appalling. They just look really appalling. <laughs> Oh, my goodness me. Okay, let's berate them again. I, I don't know what else I can do. I am going to get them to step up, stop those balls going over the top. We'll go positive. We'll go behind. We have to go do something. It's getting worse, Blob. I, I have never managed a team like this. It doesn't matter what I do. And as, as I said... This was so good, this save, up until four games ago, five games ago, and then suddenly the game took over. And I'm going to up the tempo, and that will do for now. We'll go positive, try and get back into the game. QPR have not been in the game. Even though they scored a goal, they haven't been in the game. <laughs> it's just like... The computer, the game, has made its mind up. It doesn't matter what I do. It's taken over now. Because I was not playing this game as badly at the beginning of the season as I am now. I have, I have no control over it now. I don't even know who the best team for Burnley is. And QPR have scored, have they? Or is that <laughs> Therese Campbell? I thought QPR had scored an own goal. 
At least we've come back into it. Maybe the step up was what it needed. But we lost the game against Rotherham. We equalised against Rotherham and still lost the game. So I don't feel very optimistic. Oh, it was Campbell. He just dragged it from behind him. Ah, oh, boy. 1-1. One, one. Oh, we dropped down to fourth then, did we? <laughs> the board would have been really pleased at that. And here's Teller. Westwood. Players like... There, there's lots of three-and-a-half-star, four-star players in this team, but that none of them have ever played like they are. I thought that was in then. But again, it's another shot from 35 yards, which is... I can't do anything other than tell them not to do it. <laughs> but what can you do? Yeah, I mean, on Tuesday I realised I have no control over this now. It's not in my hands anymore. Because what I may try to make so many changes on Tuesday... It just, and the game was not responding at all. It was not changing anything. They are exhausted. We are fully fit. And they're, all of them are absolutely exhausted. We have dominated this game. They haven't been in it. And the score's 1-1. One, one. We've had 10 opportunities to their two. And I, I, do I berate them again, or do I? We are the favourites here. Give the fans, give me something to cheer with. Give me something to cheer. If it wasn't for this Therese Campbell coming in, we'd be in a right mess. At least he scored a few goals. Middlesbrough have caught us in terms of points, so Middlesbrough must be winning. Norwich are stretching their lead now. Yeah, Norwich are a goal up. Norwich have won the title. Cardiff are losing to Stokes. Cardiff are slipping away. But we're slipping away as well. It looks like Middlesbrough now are the, the team that are, are the team to beat. Ah, uh, the right full-back again is having a nightmare. Dervis Oglu, who deserved his chance, according to the assistants, having a nightmare. Let's make some changes. We'll wait for this highlight. Vitinho. I thought that Vitinho was going to be a good player. Hasn't done anything all season. Has done nothing. Played him at fullback. We've played him on the wing. He's done absolutely nothing. And for a team that's full of good players, I just can't understand it. Can't understand it. Here is Vitinho finally doing something, but again, our finishing is dreadful. Dreadful. Why did he shoot from there? Um, let's make some changes. Who's playing badly? Uh, Kirkin's having a poor game. Loughton's having a poor game. Oh, you know what I've done? I've let the... Um, I've let the assistant manager control the substitutes bench, which and he hasn't put. Oh, he has put Connor Roberts on there, so we've got no left back cover. He always does that. If you let him set the subs bench up, he never puts enough full backs on the bench. Is Vitinho tired? No, he's fit. So let's bring Vitinho down here for Kirkin. Dervis Oglu is having a nightmare. Um, Bastian, who's this? Westwood is having a nightmare. Oh, God. They're all playing really bad. And Kirkin has to come off, doesn't he? And he should be in the centre, not... And he should be here. 
he should be playing as an advanced forward. I haven't changed that. I don't know why that. Oh, let's try again. Can we get anything out of this game? Two games to go after this. Middlesbrough have actually caught us now. It's... Oh. I just make that substitution and now we've got an injury. So I don't have anyone who can come on. And I could... That's another thing FM have to sort out, is that you can't take players off. And so, let's go attacking, because I don't care anymore. Whatever happens is whatever happens. What are Middlesbrough doing? Still winning 1-0. The title looks like Norwich have won it today. And we've just thrown away any chance we had. Looks like it's going to stay 1-1. The game is coming to a close. It's coming to its end. No highlights. Another game. If we look at these stats. Another game. We've absolutely dominated the game. And that is like every game. Every single game. This is happening. Sometimes the computer lets us win 4-0. I'm not going to say they were unlucky. They were terrible. Yeah, this is FM23. Um, I I do have some issues with FM23, Kyle, Kylo. I have some real issues with it. I think they've really screwed it up this year. Tell us out. Good, because uh, I won't miss him. He's terrible. Absolutely terrible. I I, th I really do think they have screwed up the game this year. I think they focused so much on getting it out for the PS5. They've forgotten to do anything with this game. And the things that they did, they probably did in a hurry. And they've screwed it up big time. And they've also tried to make it much harder. And I think that's causing problems. The game isn't behaving as it should do. I was telling my mate the other day that this could be this could be the best game in the world if they actually put some effort into it and changed a few things this could be the best game in the world but they're just letting it go to the dogs um in a way it's the same as FM22 but they have tried to make it more difficult um, they've they've altered the AI uh, manager input, and previously that was that's been easy to deal with. I could always tell um, what the AI manager was going to do. Um, at the moment, I've got no idea what the AI managers are doing, um, and it's very difficult to read what they're doing from what you're seeing. You have to keep stopping the game and using the stats. Um, which I'm not doing at the moment because I've just lost faith in the game again. Um, the, there's no reason why this should be happening unless it's telling me, well, tell, that Bay got injured. Therefore, this team now goes to the dogs because one player got injured. It might be that. Uh, might well be that. Because without him, we're a shambles. And it, the, I, I don't think I've ever managed a team this bad where I've had to work this hard. It's really weird, this game this year. Very weird. And if I look at the squad, just look at the squad. I don't want him. He can stay, but he'll just be a backup. He'll be a backup. Backup. Count them up. Three... 
four possibly, five. Six. There's six players. <laughs> There's six players in this squad that I would actually keep. So everybody else is going to be transfer listed. <laughs> and uh, quite rightly so. If they don't show any effort, then what is the point of having them in the team? They're all poor. Norwich have won the championship. That was always on the cards. Although we did go, we were 13 points behind at one point. We closed the gap to five and then we fell apart. And that's another thing it always says here, asked to recommend a signing. But there, you, there's, it says you can see it in the scouting center shortly. There is no section in the scouting center for recommendations from the staff i can't find it i've been playing this game all year for a long time lots of hours and i still can't find it and bristol city are down the bottom of the league again again we sh again we should be winning comfortably but i did say on tuesday that it was setting the, it all up for the final game of the season and we have to play Cardiff and the final game of the season. So it's setting it up for the final game of the season. That's all that's happening. And uh, it's in real life, I support Man United. And no matter what I do now is making no difference. This Burnley team is in second because we were switching things. We were doing all sorts of stuff in game to influence the game and we were scraping wins 1-0 wins 2-1 wins and it's suddenly not allowing me to do that anymore and i don't believe that i have suddenly become bad at the game i don't believe that for a minute um i i just think there's the game is screwed up it's really big time screwed up and they've got to get their act together. And I hope FM24 will be a lot better than this. It, in terms of it, the look of it, it is, you're right, the same as FM22. This squad planner, I don't think I've ever used it. <laughs> the, the scouting centre is a little bit tidier. Um, so, you know, scouting, my scouts cannot find any players. That's it. All these all these assignments that I have all over the place in Europe, and that's it. It's like, come on, there is. I I I would like yeah the game to be made more difficult, sure, but be fair about it. Who does he want to play now? Good lord, he wants a complete change. Yep, yeah, we'll do that then. We'll do that if you... I don't know what the best team is. Uh. Well, that's improved the morale anyway. What does the assistant say in the press conference? They're probably favourites. So he's, he hopefully has upset the team by saying that they are second best to Bristol City. <laughs> and he's not wrong. He's absolutely not wrong. And I don't know why we are in second. I really don't know why we are sitting there in second still. I just don't have any idea at all. And Kirken... And that just kind of suggests to me that the game has made its mind up. That this is what it's going to be. And we have to win this game against Bristol City. That's, that's like no other excuse. I'm going to go positive. I'm going to go um, to the press again. 
We've got to go out and try and win this game. Surely the game is going to let me win one game. My system wants to go to cautious again. We're at home again. Oh no, we're away at Bristol City. But I don't care. We should be beating Bristol City. Close him down left foot. And I don't even know why I'm doing this. Because it doesn't seem to be making any difference. So we'll ask the assistant to do it. The Normally how I do these opposition instructions. It makes, it makes a big difference. The team are not very happy. Um, which is not great news. And yeah, let's say we have a chance of getting promoted here. I'm expecting to see solid defense. We still need to get promotion. We still need Middlesbrough to do us a favor here. The Rotherham. Oh, Rotherham. They will hammer Rotherham. That's for sure. <laughs> so I don't expect Middlesbrough to lose against Rotherham. That's for sure. And Bristol City are dominating the game at the moment. They've created more chances than we have. And it's never a good sign. <laughs> and we could, yeah, we could possibly end up not qualifying for promotion. But the game has to do what it wants to do. I I took this Burnley save on because I thought that it was really, if it, given the players that they had, that it should be really comfortable in terms of getting promoted. Because I wanted just to try and help people get through the summer transfer window to prepare for first season in the Prem. So that's why I took them on. <laughs> and uh, it's been none of that. The game does not like Burnley. And it's making them look like monkeys. But we have actually taken the lead. I need to tell Bayer to ease off the tackles a little bit. On a yellow card after 13 minutes. That's not a good sign. And, well, at least we're 1-0 up. But that doesn't actually mean anything. Um, Bristol City do have a highlight here. Oh dear. I mean what is going on? Yeah, Murich there. Murich was shouting at the defence. I don't blame him. Look at the match momentum. Bristol City are absolutely hammering us. We've had all the possession though. I don't understand this. Why are they hammering us when they haven't had the ball? Are they a better team than us? No. Are they keeping the ball? No. And yet, why are they the better team? Okay, I'm going to slow things down. We'll just slow things down now. Let's be more disciplined. Slow the pace down. Let's try slowing everything down. We don't have enough pace up front and teams are playing the low block against us. So more direct passing is not going to really help us very much. We have to... And with more direct passing, their shooting is absolutely dreadful. So it's playing in a more frantic way that way is just going to encourage them to shoot more often. And I'd, I've tried that at the beginning of the season. And the more frantic they play... The more that they shoot from like 40 yards, they just have this rush of blood all the time. So slowing it down might be the answer. We can try it, but nothing to lose. If they equalize, we can try more direct passing. And this is what we're getting time after time after time. And sometimes 20 times in the match. <laughs> Which is quite bizarre, really. Welcome back, Blob. Oh, 
And there's that long pal. And then that's E. That, I mean, that should be bread and butter. And that's what we should have done against Rotherham. It should be easy. Where's that pass going to? We're definitely missing Bayek there at DLP. They can't even pass the ball now. And they're just like strolling past us for fun. I'm going to get them to step up. This, they're passing it past us, no problem. So let's get them to step up a little bit. Try to close them down in midfield a little bit. But I am just like totally confused. Totally confused. Kearney, he's the boy. Let's have a look at Kearney. Right foot. Have I got him on his right foot? Let's put him on his right foot. And hard tackle him as well. Yeah. Let's try and take Kearney out of the game. He's a little bit of a nuisance. And um, I don't really know what to say. I'm going to say don't get complacent. We need to know that. So far, so good. I'd, I'd take a 1-0. Good Lord. But strangely enough, for all our domination, they are the better team. And and Twine, as the free kick taker, he has a free kick of 17. And he hasn't scored from a free kick all season. And we score very few from free kicks in general. And it, it just sometimes this game doesn't make any sense. I've had, like in the Benfica save, my free kick takers are 11 and 12 attribute. And they score regularly. Andre Gomez scores from free kicks all the time. <laughs> and yet, free kick rating of 17 and he can't score at all. And I don't know what the game is trying to say to me with this finishing thing. Except that you're not good enough at finishing and you don't deserve to win anything. Oh, they haven't made any changes. Oh boy, where are we poor? Up front, we are poor. Let's give Campbell a break. Twine, again, another poor game from Twine. Cherlinoff, poor. No, he's not doing all right, but he is on a yellow card. I need to get Twine off, but I don't have anyone. So give Ashley Barnes a game, why not? And let's give Zauri. Let's give Zauri a game in here. Can't play there, though. Can Vitinho play there? Yes, he can. And then Connor Roberts. Again, Jordan Bayer now is having a poor game. One of the, the best players. Loughton or Roberts? Loughton. One of the very best players, Jordan Bayer, suddenly can't play. Campbell is having a poor game today. But you can't expect him to be on form every single game. He's carried them for a long time. Those two, Rodriguez and Barnes, absolutely dreadful. And I couldn't sell them. That was the hard, the hard fact of life. But at least we're a goal up and we've got all the possession. That's all I can ask for. Oh, gosh. Cullen robbed. Here's Twine. Twine. Campbell. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. 
Absolutely incredible. You wouldn't believe it if you weren't watching it. <laughs> hey, Paul. Things are not going well. This is probably one of the toughest saves that I've ever had to do. I cannot get these players to do anything. Chance. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the standard of finishing that we've had to put up with all season. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. And is this the equaliser now? I think I probably need to go back to a balanced, just to try and hold on. Oh, but here they come. Oh, that was a good save. And they, I don't know, for like... For the amount of possession, they've absolutely matched us toe to toe. <laughs> and, uh, ah, it's terrible to watch. It's breaking my heart. Absolutely breaking my heart, this save. But Middlesbrough are obviously winning. So it, I, I called it four games ago that it was coming down to the game against Cardiff. Cardiff are losing, so their form is dipped. And I called it four games ago. I said in the last stream, Aha! I know what's happening. It's They want the, to all hinge on the Cardiff game. And I, it's happened. It's actually going to be between Middlesbrough and Burnley. But we have to play Cardiff. Cardiff cannot get second place now. It's like, I, I don't know what to say to them. We got what we came for. And we should be delighted. Let's try and cheer them up a little bit. Um, but really, I should be saying, you're absolutely shocking. You are just probably the worst team I've ever seen in my life. And I think that Burnley schoolboys under 10s team could beat them. It just goes to show how poor Bristol City are. Uh, OK, when is the next game? The final game of the season is in a week's time, so we don't need to rest them. I'm going to do... I think what I'm going to do is go and do, is do a little bit of set-piece training. Why not? Let's do a little bit. We don't need to be doing... Oh, my goodness me, what is he doing? What is he doing? That's better. <laughs> so we'll do some set piece training here. I want to do some, yeah, we're already doing some pressing training. Uh, let's do some defensive stuff. We've been defending pretty poorly, um, defending wide. And let's go with some aerial defense. Well, actually, if we look at what uh, Campbell's done since since he's come in, he's been a godsend. Without him, we'd be in a right mess. He came in at Christmas. Um, he's he's doing well. He's got one, four, six, seven, eight goals. Eight goals in his last ten games. He's done as well as I could expect him. He, I mean, he's not a great striker, but. In all fairness to him, he's he's played relatively well. Can't expect him to score every game, but I would expect other players to back him up at least. If, but we definitely, I mean, looking at that squad, that is probably the worst squad I've ever come across in my life. And like I said, I think there's probably only six players. If I manage to get promoted, there's only six players that I want to keep the rest can go I'll even like pay them to leave um because they are so bad they are probably the worst footballing team that I've ever managed in FM I I I just really don't understand it we'll just get a summary to the inbox so we will have a study of Cardiff before we go into this game. Who 
Who's this geezer? He's not Premier League quality. Might do a decent job, but he's still not Premier League. And we need a DLP there anyway. Central midfield on support. Could he do that job? Good tackling, yeah, he could do that job. Passing and vision is poor, though, so nah. Um, who's this guy? 16 million. Advanced forward. He's not Premier League quality. Better than what we've got. Lacks pace, really, for an advanced forward. I did have my eye on... Um, on one guy, I think he, and I do have money in the bank, and maybe I should spend that money, that nine million, before they adjust the budgets. And I was looking at where is he? Not Aspria. Um, where's he gone? Oh, don't tell me it hasn't added him to my shortlist. Well, thanks very much, FM. But I was also looking at this guy as a winger, um, possibly playing him as um, a shadow striker. Um, he's got the ability to do a decent job there instead of trying. I think I'll make an offer on him, get rid of that nine million before the board take it away. Um, so we'll come down seven point five mil. And we'll go installments, we'll go four, actually just two would be better. And we will bump that up with another, see if they'll take that. 8.5 and 7 mil, we can come down from there. Let's try them with that. No, they don't want that percentage. We'll go 30. And they've gone for that. Okay. So I I think he would be a decent player. He just about get by in the Prem. He's got good physicals to do the job. Yeah, sign Erling, Erling Haaland. What I need is um what I've got in Benfica, Endrick. I really need an Endrick. Slightly interested. Uh, okay. We're not going to worry too much about that. Star player. Do I want... I will make him a star player. And then we can always reduce it. That's not going to happen. The board isn't going to be willing. I think this we're flogging a dead horse here. The board will not be willing for this. It suggests that. Oh, he's gone for it. <laughs> okay. Ten grand less than what he wanted. Uh, he's gone for it. We're going to have to make a lot of signings. I just wanted to spend that money on somebody who could possibly... Um, who could possibly... Join the six that I'm thinking could go to the Premier League. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I'll just let you control that. I don't have any problem with wanting to change those. And Bayek still... Oh, he might be back for the last game of the season. Might be able to come on as a sub. Uh, don't offer a contract. Okay, we can do that. So the yeah the youth intake as well was absolutely chronic. If we have a look at the um, the youth intake. Oh, actually, it wasn't bad this year. It wasn't bad last year. Was absolutely dreadful. There's a couple of good players here. Who is this geezer? Winger, striker, 
16 years old. He looks like he could be a good player in the future. Left back, who's pretty good. Striker, who's pretty good. Yeah, a couple of decent looking players here. Central defender, six foot two already. He's only 16 years old. Decent, decent. So we'd have to have a look at those boys in the summer and put them on a good training regime. Uh, sunny pickup. Zaure. He's transferless. I don't want him. Keep him at the club. Nathan Teller. No, thank you very much. Um, let's offer these boys a contract then. Uh, we don't want these. Uh, that wage rise. And we don't want that one. Yeah, I'll be happy with that. <clears throat> Just take those wage rises out. Youngster, this should be fairly straightforward. Okay, we'll go with that. And this guy, youngster, let's offer him a contract. Whew. Don't want these yearly. No, I'm going to walk away. I'm not paying that kind of money for a young player. No chance. He can go and find another club who'll, who'll uh, pander to his whims. Too often people just click that and sign him. I'm not going to put up with that nonsense. You don't think the contract is fair? Go elsewhere and find something else. Oba Wodu. Did what did I see him in my scouting? Um Oba -wo Wodu. No, he wasn't there, was he? But maybe he was in the in this one. Can't see him. There's just a lack of players that the scouts have found. I think it's going to be a very tough summer. Putting under 18s in the under 21s before they're ready, that's always a bad sign. <laughs> it's always a bad sign. No, I'm not praising any of them. None of them deserve any praise. Well, this has become a big game then, hasn't it? <laughs> God, if... At home has become a very big game. McNally Bayer. He doesn't want Harwood Bellis in, in the team. I do. So I'm going to put Bayer. He wants Kirk in. The, why does he keep doing that? And where is Harwood Bellis? Harwood Bellis. McNally. And Bayer, that's about as good a back line as I can get. Cullen, Vatino, and Brownhill. I have absolutely no idea who the best team is. Cherlinoff didn't play too badly last time, though, did he? Maybe he deserves another shot. Oh, I really don't know who this, what the best team is. Definitely not Rodriguez, that's for sure. Even after a whole season, I still don't know what this, what the best Burnley... Who's the top scorer in the league? Um, Brewster, Sheffield United, 31 goals. We don't, e we don't even register. Our goal difference... Looking at that though, our goal difference is better than Burnley's. is is only two behind Norwich, and that's down to our defence. Really, it's got to be down to our defence, who were outstanding in the first half of the season. 
So Cullen, DLP, Vitinho and Brownhill. I'm going to bring Brownhill on here. Swap those two over. Twine, Cherlinoff and Campbell. Vitinho. Zauri. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Bastian can come in instead of Barnes. Callum Roberts, we don't need two right backs in there. Teller's injured now, isn't he? Oh, what a nightmare. Zauri Dovasoglu. Now let's have a look at this Cardiff team. I wonder what the board and the fans are expecting. They'll probably expect a win, won't they? Cardiff play control possession. So they're going to press us high, which means I don't want to keep the ball. If they're going to... They're going to press us high up the pitch. Therefore, I'm going to play with a low block. And we are... We are going to not play out of defence. Take that out for now. Although I think I should have that in at all times. Be more disciplined. Hold a team meeting. Make it a reality. Some of them are very positive. Some of them just encouraged. Oh, we'll deal with that in the summer. And he has accepted. Good. So that's the first signing. So I have seven players now I can take up into the Prem if we get there. So this is going to be interesting, this Cardiff game. I actually don't think I'm going to win it. I mean, what do you think, guys? I can't see how we can possibly win this game. Um, a team that's just awful. And I really don't see how we can actually win this game. And I'm be very interested to see what the board do because I think Middlesbrough will probably win. Coventry, yeah, they should beat Coventry. Coventry twenty second. So yeah, we could we could finish in third here, and that'll be a shame. <laughs> After all the work we've done. Expectations, win-win. Bayek, could he play 45 minutes? Let's get to the fitness test. 45 minutes, let's put him on the bench then. Let's put him on instead of... Zauri, I oh, know. Yeah, let's put him on there. I really don't feel very optimistic about this. I think we've got to go positive. Got to take the game to them. Hi, Daniel. How are you doing? Well, this is the uh, <laughs> the final game of the season. A game that we actually have to win. I'm actually going to put this back to extended highlights now. Um in this must win game uh, 
no, I want to play positively. I, I'm going to leave the opposition instructions to the assistant. And we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I don't want them focusing really on too much apart from their own game. But the, the key to this is can we finish? Can we score goals? Can we score goals? And if we can't, then we're not going to win it. If it's going to be the same as it's been, um, we're favourites here. We, we've been favourites all season and you just have been useless. That's, my team talk would be so different to this in real life. You are like a bunch of schoolboys. You need to get out there and show me that you can actually play football. I would be so angry with them because this is dreadful. There's another Leon's Foster, is there? Playing for Cardiff at the back. Yeah, we don't want don't want to press them too much. Just stand off them. Just engage them around around this area and then break quickly. Well done. That was how you should do it. That's a that's a low block in action. Just don't go in their face, just wait. Just wait for them to mess it up and then you take over. We've had the better of the game so far. We don't want to be pressing too high. Have I got that? No. We are pressing quite high and I don't quite understand that, why that should be. We should be allowing them the space. Big, massive game. Can we score goals is the question. Is the game going to let me score a goal or two? Nice ball. Twine. Are you going to do something? No. <laughs> oh, I thought the game was going to let me score a goal then. But no, it wasn't. Set piece. Come on. From a set piece. We can do this. Into the box. Nope. No, we can't. Comes out to churl and off. He's not bothered of chasing it even. And we do have a throw. At the moment, we are pretty much the better team, but then that's the story. We don't have the possession, which is interesting. Um, I think we need to try and get some of this possession back. So we'll just up the tempo a little bit. Let's just try upping the tempo a little bit, try and get some more of the possession. This might be a, a game where we go more direct, actually. Cardiff are just dominating the possession. So let's let's try something. Shall we try that more direct passing? We don't have to go too much and then we'll pass in the space. Let's see if that makes a difference. We have tried all these things before and they they just not the team is just not good enough basically. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> uh, Cardiff have had 60% of the possession. For a team that normally win all the possession, we're in a mess again. But the block is working, and that's good. We're getting our blocks in. So the low block hopefully means they won't be scoring goals. And it also means it forces them to take shots from further out. And if we've got the press right, then the, the ball should go straight at the goalkeeper. And we do have a chance. Here's Campbell. And even Campbell can't put it on. Uh, the, ga I, the game is just going to take this right down to the wire, isn't it? This is, I called this in the last episode. I called it five games ago. It's a, like it's made its mind up five games ago and it wasn't going to... Yeah, I mean, that's no different to to every other game. Um, but we just, again, can't score. We are playing the more direct passing, though. It's not hugely direct, but it's a little bit stretching them more than we would normally do. Uh, 
we've we just got to score some goals. It's like, come on, boys. Oh, don't give it a whim. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Don't give it to Cullen, whatever you do, because he'll shoot wherever he is standing. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Yes, we've got a goal. <laughs> we have got a goal. And we are one up against Cardiff. It is comically bad. I've never seen anything like it. No matter what I do, it doesn't seem to make a difference. We are ahead, and that does now mean that no matter what Middlesbrough do, and Middlesbrough are losing to Coventry. This is bizarre. This is quite bizarre. Uh, but So there is still time to lose to Cardiff, though. So we need to keep an eye on Middlesbrough. I'm not expecting to win this game, but if Middlesbrough, uh, Middlesbrough have equalised... <laughs> and so we we need to hold on to this lead now and even score another one if we can Cardiff have just fallen apart of late and Brownhill is in now and Brownhill has made it 2-0 and suddenly the switch has been turned on and we can score goals again <laughs> we are 2-0 up and that is the worst possible news because we are going to get promoted and I'll keep my job. <laughs> and now I've got to sort this team out for the Premier League next year. Oh boy, what a task that is. I was hoping they might lose and then I'd get sacked and wouldn't have to rebuild the team for the Prem. But, oh lordy lordy, 2-0 up. And... We still haven't got any possession. This is just like a weird game. We normally dominate possession in games. We are a possession-based team. But without possession, we seem to be scoring better. Maybe I should just give the possession away all the time. Westward into the box. Another chance! 3-0! Brownhill has got another one. I knew it. I knew it that... This was coming down to the wire. And it's like the game wants to <laughs> excite you. And it's not doing that for me. By putting us through that bad run, it wasn't exciting. It was just dull because I knew what was going to happen. But now I really can't see us losing this game. And so I guess... Um, Let's praise them. We've had a lot of shots on target. Well done, lads. <laughs> and uh, I do have to be careful. Churling off isn't playing very well. Don't I, I do need to keep my eye on what's going on. And But one more and then it will be totally done. Not quite sure what happened to Cardiff. They were riding the crest of a wave a month ago. Or just maybe we've decided to find some form. Maybe that's what's happened. Um, at last, Cardiff's ratings are poor. They're getting tired. Nobody's really... We want to look at Iqbal. Just make sure Iqbal isn't causing us too many problems. He's quite a creative player. Let's tight mark him and give him a hard tackle. Take him out of the game. He's being a bit of a nuisance. And, oh, Twine, is this your free kick? Oh, it's close. He still hasn't scored a free kick. You're Burnley three, Cardiff four. I, I tell you what, you might be right. You might be right. And Middlesbrough are now losing 2-1 to Coventry. They have totally blown it. Totally blown it. If they had any chance at all, they had to win their game. I think maybe I need to make a change or two now. Let's go and make some changes. We are fitter, but I let's bring some players on. I don't think we need to change too much. Um, Howard Bellis isn't having the greatest of games. I'm going to bring Bayek on. For Cullen. And Churlinoff isn't playing very well. 
So let's bring Vatinho on. And Kirkin is tired though, getting tired. Let's bring Vatinho back to full back. And Pedelazio can come on there. Cambo can go in the middle, not to one side. And he can play as an advanced forward, please. And then Twine is having a good game for a change. I think we'll leave it at that now for the time being. We should be able to just see this game out. I, I'm not going to go back to being balanced. I'm not going to invite them on. We should just hopefully see the game out. It should be very, very simple, straightforward to do. I wonder if that Leon's Foster is related to the other Leon's Foster. I wonder. But Cardiff are coming back into the game. But uh, we've got we've got the game at 3-0. And that's a lovely ball. And Campbell's in space. Go on. Go on. Oh, good Lord. I wonder what the budgets are going to be. I think we can speed this up now, can't we? We can uh, go to key highlights. We can speed it up now. I think it's game over. I've still got two other changes to make, so let's go make those changes. Anybody tired here? Bless them. Westwood in midfield. Let's bring Bastion on then. And... Can he play? I don't want to take Twine off. He's playing well. Jordan Bayer and Lowton can come on. And that'll do it. Let's just see this through to full time. We have got to the we have got to the Prem after all that. And one of the toughest seasons that I have ever played in FM. I've never had a team that couldn't score goals like that. And that was a tough, tough season. Brownhill, though, has decided today is his day. <laughs> and uh, he's got another one. It's 4-0. And we are rocking and rolling now. And, well, I, I, sometimes I just don't understand it. I haven't made any spectacular decisions for this game. I had to work really hard for the first part of the the season and now when I've I've done nothing really here it's the game we've suddenly thrashed Cardiff 4-0 I know Cardiff were out of form they'd gone downhill a little bit but is there any need for them to be beaten 4-0 by a team that can't can't score goals in any other of its games <laughs> it just doesn't it's not making any sense to me and could it be five? Twine is in now. Twine's made it 5 nil, And Cardiff have been dumped. <laughs> and that's like what I expected of this team all season. This good, quick passing. And all my other teams playing this system are able to do this. And Burnley have not been able to do it. A good, quick very swift passing and it creates huge openings in defenses especially that shadow striker and the dlp starts roaming around these areas it's lovely to watch with benfica it's brilliant to watch but burnley have not been able to do it but we have won we've beaten cardiff by five goals to nil <coughs> and we have got through um to the prem which means it's going to be really tough there's a lot of work to be done now and i don't see i really can't see any more than seven players being good enough and burnley promoted what the board got to say initial budget so we have seven hundred fifty thousand wage budget Transfer budget of 40 million. We don't have players worth a lot of money. But 
40 million. Can I do it on 40 million? We're going to have to look at the um, free transfers, end of contracts, big time. And um, no, what is it? Sheffield Wednesday, Peterborough. What is the score, Blob? Yeah, Daniel, I, I just don't know how we managed to beat someone 5-0. I don't know how that happened, Daniel. But it's a good win. It's a very good win. Um, 40 million is not enough. But the, the, the one good thing about going up to the Prem is that you don't need a big squad. And 21 or 22 players will be enough. Oh, 4-3 to Peterborough. Oh, my God. So, I'll be looking at a squad of only 21 players, possibly bringing a youngster or two in to sit on the bench, develop them. But I don't want more than 21 players. They're only going to play, because they're not going to do very well in the cup either. So, they're only going to play maybe... 42 games all season so why do you need more than 21 players and then when you have a squad of 21 players you'd get less injuries obviously the game can't injure all your players because you won't have enough players to put in the team so the smaller your squad um so we don't need a great big squad next year for 42 games and the board have announced they are very pleased we have one promotion um, and they're looking forward to seeing how the team play next season. I'm not. <laughs> and the board are delighted with the progress. And, um, yeah, we had to do it. So we're just on schedule. So um, we're not ahead of schedule. We had to do that. It was required. But we've done it. Um, the supporters are also pleased um, to be back in the Premier League, as they would be. Brown Hill got a hat trick. That's his second hat trick of the season. Has he done enough to go into the Prem? He's now 27 years old. I think possibly he's done enough to join the seven. Um, he just needs to play more consistently next year. And well done. Well done, boys. Middlesbrough lost to Coventry. So the playoffs will be quite interesting to see who comes up with them. So we have done it. We have done it. We have got the promotion that we needed. And uh, my nerves are a bit shot now. And I just don't know what to make of that. I really... I do feel that the game took control off me. I'd, I'd had so much control for so long that season. And... The game just suddenly took that control off me at the end. Um, I had a feeling it was going to let me get promoted. So, mm, okay. We've got a lot of work to do in the summer, which we will begin next Tuesday. If I can get on on Saturday, I'll come on on Saturday. It just depends on the internet. I think everybody in the neighbourhood is online at that time on Saturday. So I'll test the internet on Saturday. If I can get on, I'll get on and we'll start the job of rebuilding Burnley for the Prem. Um, if not, then I will see you guys on Tuesday and we will continue from where we are. We'll look at where do we go from here with such a poor squad? How do we improve this? How do we get it better? We're going to have to start with out of contracts and loans. We're going to have to get some loans in. Thanks very much, guys, for coming. Appreciate your support. And um, I'm not sure, quite sure where Ellie, um, where Ethan went. But um, thanks to all of you for coming. I do appreciate it. Puts the watch hours up. And I hope you have a good time. I mean, it is quite comical at times, this, what the game does. I will see you later. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Blob. And thanks, Kylo. And we'll see you all again when we start again next Tuesday. We'll be in the Premier League. Good night, guys.